Hi, today we're making liquid soap. I'm only going to use three ingredients, potassium hydroxide, canola oil, and soft water. I'm used to making soap like this, hard soap. This is the first time I'm going to make this liquid soap, and we're gonna see how easy it is and how cheap. This recipe comes from Jadam Organic Farming, and it's called Jadam Wedding Agent. As with any soap making, you make sure you put on your goggles and your gloves. First, you put in your soft water. Then you add your lye. And watch out, there's going to be fumes. Mixing the water and the lye is going to create a gas. And to mix it, you want to tilt the pot. And this is going to generate some heat. Once it's all dissolved, you put in your oil. Then you get an immersion blender and you blend it for 10 minutes. <laughs> I think it looks ready before 10 minutes. If this works, I'm gonna be so angry from all the work that people have told me I had to do to make soap. Okay, so let me show you how it looks. This is what you're looking for. You do not want to manually stir this. You want to do an electric stir. Now what we do is we let it sit for three days. It's covered, just like this. Just some more notes while this is sitting. I used a stainless steel pot. You can use this. You do not want to use aluminum and you can use a heat resistant plastic pot. You want to make sure that the pot is more thin than it is wide. It's going to be easier to stir. You want to be in a well ventilated area. And then a note about the water. You want to use soft water. Soft water is either distilled water or rainwater. I have plenty of rainwater. I collected a whole bunch in just a day and I just screened out the little buggies that were in it and it's good to go. What else, 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 what else? Now three days have passed. This is what it looks like now. It kind of feels like butter, but also kind of like a soft cheese. The final step is just adding more water. Regarding the second part of this process, I flubbed it. There's a reason why I messed up. I'll go into it later, but I did fix it and it works. So you could stop this video right now because I'm not going to show how I did it. I'm going to explain it, but the instructions are all in the description below. So you can go straight there and it's going to work. In fact, it looks like this. But if you do care to stick around and find out how I flubbed, the lessons that I learned and the little notes that I took down, and a little bit of rant, you can stick around because um, I'm gonna do that right now. Because of my tendency to rant, I'm gonna be cutting through this really fast, but there's no promise. Okay, so done right. This process will take 30 minutes of your time. Now there's more in terms of wait time, and I'm gonna go into that as well, but I'm not counting the wait time as processing time because you can do other things while you're waiting for things to harden, or dissolve. But as I talk about the process, I'm going to divide it into two stages. The first stage I'm referring to is the, the mixing and the hardening of the ingredients. And then stage two is the softening or the dissolving of the ingredients into the consistency that you saw. The instructions below are the ones that are detailed by Yang Seng Cho. And you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind that this is designed as a farming uh, input and farmers tend to make things in big batches. So it has 
in mind that you might be making 100 liters at a time. Because I did three liters, I think this is why things sped up for me. Another thing affecting processing time is the temperature. So stage one is supposed to take on average about 10 minutes. Because I was in my heated house, it took much less time. You only have to wait for the ingredients to harden like a thin mayo and I think I got to the thin mayo at about four minutes. And the only reason why I went longer is because I thought it had to be, it should be closer to 10 minutes. So I waited for it to be kind of a just regular mayo. I don't think it messed anything up, but if you can do it in four minutes, might as well stop it earlier, right? Okay, so the waiting time between stage one and stage two is supposed to be three days. I took the three days to make sure I didn't mess up. Uh, it's possible you could go less than that. I would still recommend going over 24 hours because in that first day it emitted some fumes. So I would at least wait for the fumes to die down and for it to just neutralize. It was neutral on day three, it, but I didn't check on day two. So you can, um, if you're an experimenter, uh, you can try it after or on day two and see if it works for you. In stage two, you add water in two parts. You add one fourth of the water up front just to get the hardened soap off the edges and the corners of the pot. Then you add the remaining three quarters to finish the dissolving process. You're allowed to use the immersion blender in that first part, and you're not supposed to use it in the second part. I did use it in the first part, but I don't think I had to. I think I could have been without the blender entirely in, um, in, this, in stage two. The reason I flubbed in stage two was because I originally was gonna make just a one liter batch. So I had written all the measurements for a one liter amount of soap. Then I decided to do three liters. And it's just because I was looking at the wrong set of directions that I made for myself that I put in, I didn't put in enough water in, uh, in stage two. And so it wasn't dissolving, it was staying kind of thick. I think it was a great experience because I saw what happens when you slowly add water. I saw the hardened soap uh, dissolve slowly, kind of like it, it, it absorbed it. And I didn't measure it. I just kept adding it until it turned into the consistency of liquid soap. Um, so for me, because I messed up, it took me 24 hours, like that stage on average is supposed to take you, but it could have taken me less. I just don't know um, because I was slowly adding water. If you add all the water at once, it's possible that it'll be less than 24 hours. But what that means is that if you do mess up, you can, it's just so easy, you can easily fix it. So it's another good lesson. I was quite happy with the three liters. I only showed you about half a gallon of it. Uh, it's a good amount. However, because the soap can be used for a ton of things, your hand soap, your dish soap, your laundry soap, shampoo, it could be the wedding agent for a, a homemade fungicide. Um, I'm gonna make five liters next time. I also wanna share my personal experience of taking a shower with it. Obviously, I first used it as a hand soap and I noticed it made my hands soft. It smelled neutral because I didn't put any essential oils in it, but I was fine with that. It's a nice neutral smell. And I was just about ready to use it as a body wash. Two days ago was the second time I used it in the shower and it was so soft, but I decided to use it as a shampoo. Because my hair was a little bit greasy, I applied it twice. But if I was a daily hair washer, I would only apply it once. I wasn't planning on using it as a conditioner, but it was so soft. You know how conditioner is meant to make your hair soft? Because it was so soft, I did not bother with the conditioner. I used it twice, so that second time it was acting as a conditioner. This is how my hair looks. I'm perfectly happy with it. It smells nice. Whatever neutral nice smells like. You could add essential oils to it if you want but I kind of feel like consumerism is kind of driving me to the smells and not because I really need to have smells. So my next step with this soap is to try to make a fungicide with it, but it's going to be a preventive fungicide. So I'm gonna mix herbs in it. 
if you're interested in that, you can subscribe or you can just check back on my channel later to see if it works. Apparently the soap is going to change color over time, but it's not going bad. So don't worry about that. It only improves with age. I'm going to use it up before it ages anyway. When I did my own calculations based on what I spent on the ingredients, this much cost me 33 cents to make. That's using a GMO canola oil. If I were to have used a non-GMO canola oil, it would have cost me 78 cents per 12 fluid ounces. You don't have to use canola oil at all. You can use olive oil, uh, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil. I think any liquid oil would work, but I didn't do the cost calculations on those. This soap decomposes in five days in nature. Uh, so if you were gonna use it um, on plants, it's safe for the environment unlike synthetic detergents. 